My name is Jessica Eccles. I am a psychiatrist and I'm currently an MRC Clinical Research Training Fellow at uh, Brighton and Sussex Medical School. As a psychiatrist, I am interested in the relationship between mental health and physical health. So one of the things that I'm interested in is this concept of joint hypermobility, which is actually a rheumatological condition. Joint hypermobility is where people have unusually flexible joints. Interestingly, from my point of view as a psychiatrist, people with hypermobile joints are much more likely to suffer with anxiety. In the general population, about 20% of people have unusually flexible joints. But in a uh, population of people with anxiety or panic disorder, about 70% have unusually flexible joints. We know that people with unusually flexible joints seem to have overly active fight or fright nervous systems. So they're more likely to suffer with a disorder called postural tachycardia syndrome, where you have an abnormal uh, heart rate rise on standing. And I have shown in some of the work that I did uh, before my PhD that people with unusually flexible joints seem to have different sized part of the brain called the amygdala, which is responsible for fear processing and um, emotional interpretation. The hypothesis is that people with unusually flexible joints are more likely to be anxious because they have unusually reactive um, flight or fright nervous systems and have aberrant reactivity of areas of the brain involved in emotional processing. In order to test that hypothesis, I took 70 people and half of them had anxiety disorder and half of them didn't. And I uh, purposefully sampled them so that in each group, half of them had flexible joints and half of them didn't. So I could look for differences between the groups. Firstly, I did some brief autonomic function tests to look at the integrity of the uh, flight fright nervous system. And uh, secondly, I put people in the brain scanner and showed them pictures of emotional faces to look at their emotional reactivity in the brain. So what I found is when we looked at the anxiety group compared to the non-anxiety group, regardless of whether they were hypermobile or not, they had increased heart rate responses on standing compared to the non-anxious group. But then if you look at it a little deeper, uh, the people who had hypermobility, they had greater heart rate rises on standing compared to the non-hypermobile people. We also put people in the brain scanner and showed them emotional uh, pictures. And uh, what we found was that anxiety was associated with activities in areas of the brain, um, such as amygdala, which is responsible for fear, and insula, which is responsible for sort of the representation of the body. Interestingly, the relationship between those brain areas and anxiety was really strong in people with hypermobility, but not in people without. So if you were hypermobile, the activity in amygdala and insula correlated really strongly with your anxiety level, but if you weren't hypermobile, there was no relationship. So hopefully, what this will do is help us treat people who are hypermobile and anxious in a more personalised way. So it may be that there are particular medications that act on the autonomic nervous system that are particularly useful in anxiety in people with hypermobility. So I would hypothesise that perhaps medication like beta blockers, which uh, stop your heart rate rising, may be beneficial in people with hypermobility. So that's something that needs to be tested. The next stage of this research would be for me to try and secure more funding to, um, to try and do um, trials of whether uh, particular medicines are more effective in people with hypermobility and anxiety.